pray with me? Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I invite you to listen for a word that God might have for you this day. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Friends, this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Before crossing the border into Mexico last week, I was on the group chat with my family, and my mom suggested the theme song, If I Had a Hammer, for the weekend house-building trip. And when I didn't immediately reply to that, she texted me separately to make sure that I had seen her reference and suggestion that the Peter, Paul, and Mary song be our theme. And I, of course, had to acknowledge it that time, and then proceeded to tell my group that my mother had enthusiastically selected our theme song. And later in the weekend, someone started singing it while we were on the work site and said, Laura, tell your mom I'm singing our song. I think she's watching right now. You're welcome, Carol. <laughs> this past week, as I was recovering from the weekend and preparing to preach on time and talent, this song kept coming back to me, and boom, I had a sermon title. And don't worry, we'll be singing it together in closing, so we will all have this song in our heads as we go from this place for the rest of the day. You're welcome. I remember being in eighth or ninth grade when I took one of those aptitude tests to determine some good job possibilities for me based on my interests and skills, perhaps Many of you have taken these tests before throughout different parts of your life. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but I remember this was the first one I had ever taken, and I had no clue what I wanted to be when I grew up, and the results showed I would make a very good park ranger. I like to be outside, I like working with people in groups, and there is no math involved. So that seemed like a pretty solid assessment. The journey to become a pastor is a long one, and along the way there are lots of tests and assessments as well as prayers and conversations and reflections. I can confidently say that I am an ENFJ on the Myers-Briggs, I am a 9 on the Enneagram, I'm a Hufflepuff at Hogwarts, and my spirit animal is a hummingbird. I'm sure many of you have taken these tests or done the Strengths Finder book, as I did in a previous job, or some other form of assessment to deter determine your gifts and your skills. How well do you know yourself? How well are you able to assess your talents? Many of you know that stewardship isn't just about the money so we can set the budget for next year, 
that's a pretty basic understanding, but really it's more than that. It's holistic. It's the sense that we are doing an assessment of our whole lives and seeing not just where we spend our money, but where do we spend our time? Where do we offer our talents? And to whom do we offer them? When we are prayerfully considering the call that God has put on our lives and the personal mission statements that we are working on, we also have to do an honest assessment of our gifts and our skills so we can be exploring the ways that God has called us to use those gifts and skills to glorify God and to serve one another. I had a friend ask me this week what it means to glorify God. I realized that lots of my friends make anonymous surprise appearances in my sermons because I'm off often talking about it, and then they ask me questions, and, well, what do you know? It goes into the sermon. But she said, well, what does that mean to glorify God? What does that look like? As Paul says in our scripture passage today, it's presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. That means showing up to worship and showing up for each other. I truly believe that one of the greatest gifts we can give of each other is our time. There are a thousand places you could be on a Sunday morning, and you choose to be here at church, worshiping God, singing together, reconnecting, listening for the word proclaimed. We often think of sacrifice as something you have to give up or something valuable that you offer for a higher purpose. Paul is talking about using our body as a sacrifice, and what if we think about that as our time? Your body can only be at one place at one time, which is really a shame. If I had a superpower, mine would be to be in multiple places at the same time, but until that day, we have to make choices about where we spend our time and where we need to be at any given moment in our day in order to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God and to each other, we have to offer our time. Offering our time glorifies God. So, how do we spend our time in ways that glorify God? Well, I have some ideas, of course. Maybe there are some events coming up at BPC that are of interest and you'd like to put them on your calendar. Not just read them in the bulletin, but put them in your calendar. Commit to working through the questions in the Your Life Calling booklet and plan to create a personal mission statement on November 3rd, Recommitment Sunday. Is there a mission of the church that holds a special place in your heart? If you're coming to worship, that's well and good. And commit to coming to other events, even if it's only once a month. Maybe you've always done the same stuff, and it's time to shake it up a little bit, do something different, get around a new crowd. What do you have that you can offer to the community, to this community, to the beloved community? Do you have ideas? Tell me, tell Dave, tell Catherine, tell someone. Find something that sparks interest and passion and show up. In fact, someone asked me recently what they can do to be supportive of me as I begin my ministry here, and that's exactly what I said. Show up, come to stuff, volunteer, get involved, pick up your hammer and jump in. And if you don't have a hammer, someone else does. Trust me, I borrowed lots of hammers last weekend. I'm sure they would be happy to let you borrow it. When we use our gifts and skills to serve one another, we glorify God. When we prioritize a mission project or volunteer for a cause that we serve, a cause that we care about, when we serve on a committee or offer a helping hand, we are glorifying God. When we break down stereotypes and build bridges or houses, when we educate ourselves about unjust systems, when we welcome the stranger, when we fight for equality and make earth-conscious choices, 
we glorify God. One of the coolest things about offering our time and talents to God's glory is the way that the Holy Spirit will work in our lives to surprise us and even to bless us. I cannot say that construction work is one of my greatest skills. I went to Mexico last weekend and I had a blast because it uprooted me from my day to day. It was an opportunity to get to know different people and working together, we built something that we could feel proud of. On the first day of our build, I successfully hammered many nails into the frame of what was to become the wall for a house. And I also successfully hammered my finger, which was fine after some disinfectant and some super glue kept it together for the rest of the weekend. Lots of tape, healing quite nicely, growing a new finger. I feel like I've reached some rite of passage to go on the Mexico trip and sustain an injury just to prove I've done some real hard manual labor. But for the weekend, we were taken out of our comfort zone and not only did construction, but did the camping bit where you sleep outside in a tent. And while I knew what to expect for the most part, perhaps the best part was that God took this motley crew and brought us together as the body of Christ each with our different skills and talents and working together we built a house and we had fun doing it in offering our time and our talents we were blessed by god and blessed by one another and i'll admit it was way more fun than i thought it was going to be paul acknowledges that god has given us different gifts and yet we need each other as a part of the same body. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. As the body of Christ, God calls us forth to be co-workers with God in the mission of liberation and reconciliation. Every gift of the Spirit has a responsibility that goes along with it. As Diedrich Bonhoeffer puts it, the grace of God is freely given, but it is not cheap. We have been called and commissioned to costly service. The Christian life involves inward growth and renewal, but not in a self-serving way as much as the popular self-help literature would have us believe, but it is a movement from the inside going outwards towards God and towards each other as we move through God's redemptive activity in the world through Christ. As we assess the ways we spend our time and as we discern our God-given skills and gifts, my prayer is that we will see God's invitation to use our whole lives for God's glory, that we will present our bodies as a living sacrifice, that we will show up for God and one another, coming together as the body of Christ, that we will allow ourselves to be blessed by the Holy Spirit with a renewed passion for and interest in God's people, and we will commit to sharing our gifts and our skills with the beloved community. We take this up in the confidence and hope that our God is always at work for our liberation and our reconciliation. And we participate with gratitude and great joy. Come, let us pick up our hammers and work for justice, for freedom, and for love. Amen.